Hello everyone, my name is MJ Volches, and it's that time of the month again. It's time for me to share to you the creation process of this month's entry for hashtag TUP art challenge. So yeah, if you don't know what TUP art challenge is, it's actually a challenge that I kind of initiated myself and I'm probably the only participant. But still, it's a challenge that I plan to do probably every year for each book of the Underland Chronicles. I started late this year, that's why I failed to make some visuals and, you know, market it to the internet and stuff. That's why I'm probably the only one doing it right now. But hopefully through the Underland project, I'd be able to like urge or convince the other fans of the series to partake in today's challenge. And also through this video, hopefully I'd be able to do that. Yeah, for the month of May, I'm supposed to work on any scene within the chapters 10 to 12. So yeah, I've actually already chosen what scene I'm going to make and that's gonna be in chapter 10 where Gregor was first introduced to the prophecies when he was taken to the prophecy room. Yeah, that's a scene that I plan to do so that I can use the 3D model of Gregor as well and just model the room uh, based on some initial designs that I have in my head of it. And yeah, that's pretty much the plan is for this artwork. And yeah, if you want to take part on this challenge, just head over to the description below and find the links to the picture or the image which contains all the stuff you'll need to take part on the challenge. So yeah, just go down below, find the link and, you know, partake in the challenge yourself. It doesn't matter if you're late. What matters is, is that you make more artworks for the Underland Chronicles. You can even use my adaptation of the characters through 3D. Uh, you can download the Gregor, Boots, and the Crawler models. Um, the link will be in the description as well. And you can use those to make your own Blender artworks. And hopefully uh, through this video, you'll learn how to do that because I'll be using Blender uh, for this. And Blender is a free program and you can just download it by going to the link which will be in the description or what's shown right here. Anyways, without further ado, let's get to working on this artwork. So yeah, for this artwork, I am using Blender 2.82a. It's the latest official version. And yeah, I'm in the default layout here and I'm probably not gonna be deleting the default cube. I'm gonna be using it to become uh, the prophecy room, which uh, according to the description, it's just a small room whose walls, the ceiling, and the floor is filled with Bartholomew Sandwich's prophecies, which he carved into the walls and ceilings and, and floor. And yeah, you're gonna know all about that if you read Gregory the Overlander by Suzanne Collins. And yeah, this video may contain some spoilers, by the way. I gotta warn you about that if you haven't read, read the book yet. So yeah, I'm gonna be using the cube as, um, uh, as the prophecy room, as a room. So I'm not gonna be deleting that. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to append the Gregor model. So I'm just gonna head over to the folder where I saved it. So it's gotta be here. Gregor final, Gregor final, Gregor final. Lots of finals. So yeah, Gregor full. So yeah, you have to append the Gregor underscore full collection if you're gonna be using this character because I've, I used the same blend file. I uploaded the same blend file that I got this model from. So yeah, just append the collection Gregor underscore full to append the whole Gregor model and then put it in scene collection. And then I'm just gonna uncheck. I'm gonna enable some icons here, some restriction toggles. So I'm gonna enable the viewport display, render, and then I'll probably turn those on later. But for now I need these. So I'm gonna turn off in the viewport, the hair, the particle systems here in the eyebrow, the high poly eyebrows. And I'm just gonna settle with the proxies and, uh, and then I'm gonna uncheck hide to hide all the custom shapes that comes with it. And then I'm just gonna try and model the room first here. Just to lay out stuff. I'm gonna delete this edge here so we have an opening. Nope, just edge. And I'm gonna position Gregor probably bigger. I'm gonna set the pivot point to 3D cursor so that it uses the pivot point right here. I mean, it uses the 3D cursor, which is in the middle of the world here as a basis for when you scale or rotate or move the object. So this room is probably too high. Well, I'm just gonna scale that to the Z axis. It's supposed to be just a small room. Gregory is 11 years old, and if Vicus, who is, who is an old man, can stand inside the room without having to dock, which means this, it could be this high, because Gregor is an 11 year old, and the size of an adult is roughly the size of a cube here in Blender. Yeah, that's kind of how high a, a regular adult is, because that's how I modeled Gregor. But that's that was my basis for the height of Gregor. So. Vico should be this high and he should be able to stand up inside the room. So I guess this 
high is good enough. I'm not really going to be showing all of the room, just a short portion of it where the prophecy of Grey is, because that's the prophecy Gregor was reading here. I'm going to delete this cube because I just showed, I just added that for reference. So yeah, I think this room is big enough. I'm going to settle with that for now. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to post around Gregor so that he's facing uh, this wall right here because I decided that this wall will be where the prophecy of gray is rz90 negative I'm just gonna move it in object mode first because I find that there's some really weird deformation if you move this in post mode you can only move it a few inches but moving it so far will deform some some parts of the bones of um, some parts of the mesh which is parented to the bones so I have to move it in object mode first to position it properly and then proceed to post mode when I want to post it so I position it properly in the world and I'm gonna use the post mode to post Gregor so I guess that's how far he is from the wall well, you probably have to be closer to be able to read it because this is a room lit only by torches and torches are probably not mounted on the walls because the walls are filled with prophecies so they probably have a stand or something for the torches it's because they have to move around the torches towards the spot where the current prophecy is being fulfilled and as of now when Gregor arrived in the underland the prophecy that's being fulfilled is the prophecy of gray so the light was on it so yeah I'm probably gonna be positioning the camera now so this is just a layout it's my first it's like a first layout I'm gonna set the pivot point to median point I'll, or I'll G this to reset the location and rotation and RX90 to rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis to face Gregor here. So I'm just gonna position it right here because Gregor is rooting, reading the prophecy of Grey here. Probably too far but he'll be slightly slouched as he go closer to the wall here and read the prophecy. So I'm just gonna rotate the chest bone here and then he's reading the prophecy which should be about here. And I want her, I want him to be facing the camera there so we can see both of his eyes. Also, I need to save it on a proper saving spot. So I already actually started making this, but I decided to do it again because I didn't really talk properly on the other one. There's no like proper structure and everything's just so messy. So I'm just gonna overwrite this on the, on the one that I already did. So yeah, I decided that, I decided that the title of the art is The Prophecy of Grey because Gregor is read, reading The Prophecy of Grey. And I want to also make it so that The Prophecy of Grey is visible here and you can clearly read it. I want to be able to do that as well for this artwork. So I'm just going to position Gregor like kind of how what you saw in the thumbnail of the blend file there. The old blend file. I mean, so yeah, he's, he's reading The Prophecy and just tracing it with his... Tra tracing each line as he reads it using his right hand. Kind of like how you read something in the walls or something. Or and just a, a nice pose of the hand tracing the words. The, the sculpted, uh, chiseled, chiseled words on the walls there. Yeah, that's probably the only thing we're going to be modeling for this artwork. As opposed to the previous artwork, which is we had to model some rats and stuff. I also need to change Gregor's uh, shirt to the blue one. I'm probably just going to append the material that I used from the previous artwork to do that and then I'm probably gonna add more texture on his face because that's one of the things that I kind of neglected or failed to do on the previous artwork. I failed to like add more textures, texture on his face adding like sweat and then dirt and stuff. I'm gonna be doing that here probably like a small like a small sprinkle of blood because he's been through a, an experience that's just just watch the previous artwork, pro uh, creation process, the previous artwork, if you want to know what that was. Or read the book. Because before this, he was uh, he was in a situation where that, that kind of decided that he was the warrior. Kind of set the whole thing in the prophecy in motion. I'm just going to go to this, the scripting here. Uh, looks like the text file is not here yet, so I'm going to have to append it from the blend file where I got Gregor. Just to bring out the rig layers panel. So I need to go to text here. Gregor rig UI. Go to scripting. Open that. And then run script. And that should, if we select the bone again, and bring out the end panel by pressing N, it should add this the rig layers so that we, I can disable and enable bones easily or disable and enable them in the viewport we like hide or un unhide them so I need to unhide the fingers control I mean the bones that controls the fingers just kind of post it just roughly post it because this is just like the layout stage of uh, the creation process of the artwork and which is going to be tackled in part one and I'm probably gonna start modeling the walls the part of the walls like add the prophecy of gray 
but we'll see. Yeah, I'm probably gonna do that because the next part I want to be shading. So I'm just gonna quickly pose Gregor here as he traces his hand, his pose around the hand there, just to make it look appealing. And then the face. I want to be able to see the other eye here. But let's see, I'm probably gonna be changing the, the cameras focal length make it higher kind of giving like an orthographic thing or an orthographic impression i also need to turn on uh some composition guides here i always like using thirds i'm gonna turn on center as well just so i have these lines here for guides this is the rule of thirds lines and i always follow this rule in making my artworks so yeah since we have those lines set up now i really want the prophecy to be here and more visible than gregor actually or both of them visible actually this is just a layout and things could still change later i'm also going to actually go to passe part out here and set it to one so we can only see what's inside our camera the ones that is visible so yeah now let's pose his face because he's a reading i'm also going to go to the end panel i uh view and set the clip start because it clips here as you can see can see through the model and i don't really like it when that happens so i'm just gonna set this clip start to 0 0.001 so that it doesn't clip as we zoom in and i'm also gonna set the focal length to 100 the same as our camera so yeah i'm gonna post his face he's reading a part where he's about he's saying ah oh, beware on the land there's time hangs hangs probably hangs let's see hat it's a serious hat serious it's a serious ah let's make this smaller i'm actually going to do this because i don't want that timeline there we're not making an animation so we don't need it so i'm just gonna grab the top part here to close this and then that to close that so just move around the lips here I actually remapped some stuff so that i can just uh, turn on and off this option here using keyboard shortcut it doesn't have a keyboard shortcut but since i'm not using q that much which is originally the quick favorites keyboard shortcut i don't really have a quick favorites so i don't use it and yeah, so i gave it a use by uh remapping it to control this here so i can like do this to show to hide and unhide everything besides the ones that's gonna be visible in the render or you know the overlays the overlays so i can turn it off or on if i want to like clearly see here and then just move around a bone so there's no obstruction in the view so i can clearly see uh, what i'm moving and how it looks overall so yeah he's saying ah or ah so i'm just gonna move that probably move it in also gonna move down this lower lip right here so as i said in a previous uh, video a topr challenge video i don't really like a gregor's model but i decided to keep using it because it's what i started it's what it's how i modeled it in the previous um, creation process and i want to use the, the model that i ended up modeling through those uh creation process to show you guys that even if the model's like this you know i'd be able i still be able to make like a cool short film hopefully which is i'm halfway through the animation by the way and i won't be doing what i did in the previous part where I showed like a portion of it. I won't be doing that anymore because the, the, the rest of the parts, it, it's just a short film, like a really short film. Like probably like eight or like six to eight minutes. Okay then, let's get going with this. Um, I forgot to add the other view so that I can see what it looks like in a camera while I'm posing it around. So I'm just gonna put it here so the, so there's, uh, you know, these key maps are visible. For those who are following to learn how to navigate Blender. And so if you're one of the guys who like wanted to make artworks in for the inline project and are using the models, it is also like a guide for you guys, I guess. Each of the rigs for the characters are kind of the same in layout except the creatures. So yeah, you can possibly figure it out once you've like just practiced doing it first, I guess. So I'm just gonna slightly open Gregor's mouth here. To suggest that he is reading the prophecies out loud. Now I'm probably gonna have to reread the book to determine whether or not he did read it out loud. He probably didn't though. I'm just gonna get slightly open his mouth still. He's probably squinting here because it's a dark room. Lights only torch. The, the room is only lit by torch by a torch or torches uh, the Enlanders probably made it like so that it's easy to read the text or um, the carved words and even if it's you know it's it's just lit by 
torches. So I'm gonna, but I'm still gonna try, I'm still gonna make him squint. Because it's not for the dark room, it's for him trying to understand the strange words that he's reading. So you, you kind of squint. So you're gonna do that, right, when you read. You read something and you're like, what is this thing? And kind of, that kind of face is what I'm trying to go for here. So he needs to have those, that shoulder. Kind of like that, probably. Oh, erased it. I'm gonna bring this down some. Probably bring that back, or I don't know. Just keep adjusting it until it's nice. So I'm probably gonna do the same thing that I did in the previous artwork, where I added a cloth sim on the shirt to give it nice creases and stuff. It's easy to do it on a, like a still render, but for animation, it's actually not. I don't I'm not. I don't plan to do something like that because it's going to take so much time and it won't render fast. I just want the scene to be really optimized, and I don't think that would be a be a good way, a best the best way to go about it, especially especially since my computer can't handle like really long or really high poly simulations. And yeah, I had to make the clothes high poly to to be able to like make like a cloth simulation with it, like a nice looking cloth simulation. I made it like really ho low high poly. For, um, on the previous artwork. That's why it's only good for stills and not for animations. At least for now, since I don't have like a powerful computer to be able to handle it. And yeah, if you do want to help me like with my goal to buy a new PC, you can, there's a goal in my uh, Ko-fi page. Just check out my Ko-fi page and you know, support me there if you want to help me out. Buy that new PC right away instead of having to like save up for a long time just to buy it you can help me buy it right away right away because i actually really need to upgrade to be able to continue uh animating each of the episodes of the underland project my plan actually is to finish episode one and episode two that's the original plan and then just hopefully be able to make episodes three to five actually I'm, i plan i plan to make episode one two and then the trailer and then hopefully just be able to make you know, episode 3, 4, and 5 once I'm, I'm done with episode 1 and 2. But there's a lot of factors that may not make that plan happen. But I am aiming to finish episode 1 and then the trailer so that I'd be able to model all of the other characters that will complete all of the 12 that took part in the quest. And also the other ones like Vicus and his flyer. Also probably Solovit as well. But we'll see because I still need to plan what will be included in the fan trailer and i'm probably not going to end up modeling you know solovet or marath and perdita and their flyers probably but we'll see we'll see how that goes because i can't really finish i can't really like put an end to the underland project without modeling the underlanders as of now the only underlander i've modeled are the crawlers and i can't really finish this project without modeling the other underlanders. So let's go to the top view here. I want to check if our hand is going through the wall. It just needs to be not too close to the wall. Or it's the only thing that's really close to the wall. Because uh, part of my plan here is to just light uh, this spot right here, the, the prophecy. And then the light bounces will just light up Gregor. As you know, the light bounces from the torch. That's the main light for Gregor. And probably gonna put some hidden lights as well, just to add more to it. And yeah, I think this is good enough for our... Now let me go on a texture view, a textured view here, just so we can clearly see Gregor's eyes. So yeah, this will take some time, because as I said, I've used like really big texture images for Gregor's, you know, skin texture. And yeah, like I said, I'm also going to add some details on his face, like sweat and some dirt from his previous endeavors which I failed to do on the previous artwork. So yeah, I think this is good for now. Now let me just draw some annotations here to kind of kind of show you what I'm what's in my mind here. So yeah, let me just go here probably. Turn I'm going to enable the end panel cuz it's probably right here in the view. Annotations right there. I'm going to add new annotations here. Just uh, name it the layout. I don't really have to name it. I'm going to end up deleting that later on. But still, we have, I'm going to control tab back to object mode because that's pause, that's this is in post mode. If it's like this, if post is happening, see, it's in post mode. So I'm going to control tab back to object mode so I can uh, do some um, annotations. And yeah, I forgot. I, I think I need to prolong press D, draw annotation. I, yeah, I can't do it in this viewport because I can't see it because the overlays are turned off. 
So I'm gonna control space here instead. And we'll end panel. I'm gonna control Z to get rid of that. And yeah, prophecy of gray. I'm I'm gonna try writing prophecy of gray here. Uh, I'm gonna go to the this view because I'm going to write the prophecy of gray. I'm gonna go back there, and I'm gonna turn off. Wait, I'm going to yeah. I guess the cursor is on the right spot right there. I'm gonna go to the right orthographic view, and I'm just gonna roughly write the prophecy of gray here. So I'm gonna turn off the end panel. We don't need it, and I'm also gonna disable in the viewport Gregor. So I'm just going to write the prophecy here. Let's see. I I still memorize the prophecy, I guess. And I'm not sure if the prophecy has the title, like the prophecy of gray title on it. I don't think the prophecies have that. I think the title of the prophecies are just titles that the the Unlanders kind of came up with. And I probably need to add like a grease pencil object to do this. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to add a grease pencil object instead of using annotations, so I can edit it if I make a mistake. Wait, can I do that in annotations? I haven't really tried yet. I guess. Yeah, no, I'm gonna, I'm going to add an, a grease pencil object so I don't have to like prolong press D to write an annotation. So this is just a temporary, I'm gonna turn that off so that it's not included in the render. Just to help us lay out our stuff here. I'm going to use a blue ink. So I'm just gonna add a material here and change the stroke color. Uh, was this, was this unchecked? Oh well, I'm gonna add like a bluish because it kind of helps with the sketch. And I kind of just been doing this. Every time I do some sketch, I just set a blue ink to do it because it looks nice for a sketch and easy to like distinguish. So the prophecy of gray. I'm just gonna resize this, resize this later if it's too big. Uh, okay, I'm gonna turn that off. Make this a draw pen. I'll probably draw noise. Let's see, that's too big. Probably about ten. And why can't I see it? Because I'm gonna set this to surface. Yes, and uh, probably offset it to about 0 0.005. Let's see if I can. Yes, I can see it now. Okay, that's right. Be beware, underlanders. I'm probably gonna end up using this uh, this here. Let's set that to about seven because it kind of looks like sculpted. That's why I used to draw noise. Kind of looks like a carving. Beware. Underlanders. Beware of Underlanders. So how does Bartholomew Sandwich write A? Is it A like that? Or A like this? Huh. I'm going to have to like Google this. So, according to the book, Bartholomew Sandwich came from England in the 1600s. So I'm going to try this England 1600s writing. And I'm gonna look at uh, some images here. And, is, and thus... Bartholomew sandwich carved like this. So the A used is like that. So does he carve like that? How about some handwriting? 16 hand handwriting. These are uh, these are handwriting. Actually, these are callig calligraphies, I think. I don't think. Yeah, there's an A that's like this as well. So how does Bartholomew sandwich write an A? I guess that's a question that you can ask on the fandom of TUC. Yeah, look, I'm just gonna write this the way I write it. And I'm just gonna change the A. Hmm. Does he write A like that? Oh well, I'm going to delete this and draw again. Probably set this to bigger. Because Bartholomew Sandwich had to carve this. So what would be easier for him to carve? Oh well, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna settle with this kind of A. Beware underlanders. So I'm saying that I'm doing this for a layout, but I'm probably gonna end up using this um, grease pencil object, convert it to a curve or a mesh, and then use it as a boolean on the wall. But we'll see. That's kind of the plan, but I don't know how it will really look. But yeah, that's a plan. I'm you. I'm planning to use this as a boolean on the wall so that it it will uh, put the um, this text in a wall like carvings and I, I'll need to make the walls look really high poly to be able to do that too. Beware. Or I could use uh, texture but I'm going to have to like render this part and use it as a texture or something. We'll see. We'll figure that out soon once we reach that part but for now let's just write this. Beware on the landers. I'm going to have to open the book to copy it. I'm not gonna rely on my memory for this. I'm gonna open the book. Okay, let's keep going. So yeah, beware. What is he writing in all caps or? Well, it's in all caps in the book. And I don't know if 
Bartholomew Sandwich wrote it in all caps. He probably wrote it in all caps. Dang it, I'm going to have to do this again. Oh well. Wait, I don't know. Should I go for all caps or all caps so that it's more visible, I guess? I'm gonna write it in all, ca in all caps. So that our, our whole A argument thing is kind of pointless now. <laughs> Anyways, beware. So I'm not gonna try to be careful about this. I want it to be as random and as messy as it can be without losing the appeal because it's a carved words and it looks it would look nice if it's too, not too nice if that makes sense to you beware underlanders i'm probably gonna end up <laughs> like going down like that i may need some guide here i'm gonna try turn on turning on some some guides i guess i'm gonna go i'm gonna go add a voice workspace actually i'm gonna go to 2d animation workspace uh set that back to three and then I set the world or I guess make I can change it here. Not scene world. I'm gonna uncheck scene world, probably no yeah, check scene world and I'm gonna change the world to white. Just so I can see it as I write. Actually I need to turn that back on. I need to turn on I lost the grid. Well there we go. Going to have to do this. And then I need to turn on the grid again. Grid. So I have guidelines. Beware Underlanders, time hangs by a thread. Time, beware Underlanders, time hangs by a thread. This words right here are too big. So the best thing about Brindler Grease Pencil is I can do this. I can like edit it the way I'm gonna move it to ZY. I can edit it like this, like how I edit it, uh, like how I edit models. Beware Underlanders. Time hangs by a thread. The hunters are hunted. The hunters are hunted. I'm probably gonna stop recording and just write this whole thing because this is just a tedious task here and don't really need to put you through that. So I'm gonna edit this part out and then just gonna come back once I'm done writing all of the prophecies right here. So yeah, just gonna stop recording and see you once I'm done writing. And that will happen in five, four, three, two, one. So yeah, I'm done writing it all by hand and yeah my hand hurts right now it's kind of cramped but we're gonna keep going there's only a few minutes left for this part actually i'm just gonna position this on the wall properly so i'm gonna go back to the animation workspace here and i'm gonna position it in the wall i'm gonna turn on cube i'm gonna name this bg and probably gonna move this on a actually not probably i will have to move this on a new collection and name it bg because that's important. I'm also gonna move this in a new collection and name it uh, Carve, I guess. I don't know. And uh, Gray. I'm just gonna name this Gray. And I kind of have an idea on stuff, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, no. Looks like we have a stray here, which is easy to fix actually. I'm just gonna select this. Shift S cursor to selected. And then I'm gonna select that one that didn't align with the rest of the prophecy there I'm gonna get this guys and I'm gonna set the 3d cursor as the pivot point and then an s x zero and that should put it that should align it again okay so that's the prophecy of gray and it cannot be that big so I'm going to turn on Gregor again and that's probably gonna take some time I'm not responding it's just a normal thing by now for me yeah the prophecy shouldn't be this big so I'm going to have to Dude, it's supposed to be tiny words. Okay, I'm gonna get, bring the pivot point to median point. And I want the whole prophecy to be visible here. So yeah, I guess that works. Let's try and move it a bit. Like maybe here. It's too thick. Going to have to do this. Alt S and then scale it. Okay, A, Alt S. Wait, A, Alt S. This is to scale the ink, the, the like the thickness of the strokes. Bring it back to a size that's easy to. So it's ah, it hurts the eyes here. I'm gonna try making it black. Ugh. And yeah, it's probably not visible here, but maybe when it's carved into the wall there, it's gonna look nice. Not really sure. I'm gonna go back and recolor this to black probably so we have the prophecy of gray here and there's gonna be a whole lot of other prophecies that i'll need to put all over the wall there so i actually have a kind of an idea on what prophecies to use 
I'm probably gonna be asking the TUC fandom on Discord for some contributions for this artwork. And probably, I think they're gonna like it. I don't know, I'm gonna give it a try. But yeah, as of now, you think... I don't know though. Let, let me see. Let me just... I'm gonna draw tab to object mode. I need to see, enable the camera again in the viewport. And I'm gonna try doing this. Make sure that it follows the rule of thirds. So we have our prophecy of gray here. And if you zoom in, you can actually read it. So I want to be able to make this art in a way that you can actually read the prophecy that Gregor is reading here. And he's looking, maybe he's almost done with the prophecy and he's like at the two over, two under of royal descent. I mean two over, two under, yes, of royal descent, that's right. He's at two under, I guess. Ah, because he's saying, ah, two under. Uh. So the thing is, those other prophecies are probably not going to be that visible out in there. Probably just a prophecy here and there and just a few here. So they're not probably going to be visible because the light is going to be more focused here and then Gregor's face. But yeah, I'm going to try asking like the Discord community, the TUC Discord fan community for some contributions here. And hopefully they'd like it or they'd like to be a part of this. See, so I guess that's it for the layout. Uh, let me just, I mean, let me, let me tweak more settings here. Gregor seems to be too far from it. You need to be, you don't need to be that close to read it. But I don't know, it, composition wise, it doesn't look great. Maybe I can do this. I'm G, C, Z, L, G, Y, Y. And just bring him in closer. And I'm gonna select two under again. Select this. Select the eye. This, this eyeball selection, the cursor. Maybe have him duck a bit. Duck or bow a bit. Shift S, selection the cursor again. And I think that's good. He's still inside the, this line here for rule of thirds. Uh, we're good, I think, because uh, the other car carving will be tackled in the shading part, which is probably going to be next part. Yeah, it's going to be next part, the shading and most of the curve. The other carvings are going to be like a texture, which I will add like a bump or normal map to make them seem like a, a, a carving. So I guess that's all for this part. And yeah, see you on the next part. And you just heard my little sister shriek. So yeah, bye.